We at Navara Media are all incredibly sad to pass on the news that Dawn Foster, a brilliant journalist, committed socialist and longtime friend of this organisation, has tragically passed away. Dawn was only 34 and she died suddenly at her home after suffering from a long term illness. Dawn, I'm sure most of our, our our audience will be very, very familiar with her. She was a staff writer at Jacobin and before that a columnist at The Guardian. Um, she was well known in particular for her uncompromising reporting on injustice across the UK. That was particularly related to housing, social welfare and disability. Lots of topics that so many people in mainstream journalism just don't care about. That was her passion. She reported on people who were ignored by mainstream journalism. And I, I think that's you know why people valued her so highly and why it's been so devastating to hear the news this week. She was a rarity in being a working class woman who rose up to become a prominent national opinion writer, a regular on the BBC, a regular on Sky, lots of other mainstream platforms, always arguing passionately for for the left, defending the principles of, of socialism, often in, in very difficult circumstances. And she did it, you know, remarkably well. She will she she also has um, appeared on Navarra Media regularly since 2015 um, on FMs, on Tisky Sour, on The Fix when we had that show. Has always been a really, really good friend of the show, really generous with her time, you know, a real privilege um to, to have her on board with with our, our project in over over various times i also have to say from my own experience as well as a, an incredibly sharp intellect a brilliant individual always the life of a party incredibly generous with her time with her thoughts very funny now we're going to talk about what dawn meant to navara and the left in in a moment first of all for anyone who is unfamiliar with dawn's work and as i say I, I imagine most people watching this this will be i want to read a couple of extracts from her writing which i think um really summarize what was so exceptional about her as a journalist now this first extract is from a guardian piece from 2015 and this was on living life with a chronic illness Usually visits to doctors are rare, trips to hospital rarer still. Your body is temporarily malfunctioning. It is medicine's job to, job to fix you. But when you're chronically ill, the equilibrium shifts and your attitude to your body does too. If sickness is a sign of being broken, coming to terms with the fact that you are going to be broken forever is a tremendous blow. Nothing brings this home more than the never ending NHS headed appointment letters, blood tests, scans and consultations. You know more about your body than you ever imagined. I've told no end of nurses that they'll find it impossible to get blood out of my bloody terrible veins, consultants medical terminology, without a butterfly needle. I'm lucky. I'm as functional as most healthy people despite multiple chronic health conditions, but at the same time, I'm reminded that I could die at any point from an epileptic seizure or that the genetic condition that causes constant pain could with little warning advance to make me lose the ability to walk. Now, obviously, um, the circumstances in which we're having this discussion make that all the more heartbreaking to read. Um, now, the, the the topic which has come up most most often um, on on social media, and I do really recognize re recommend sorry um, if you haven't been on Twitter over the past twenty four hours, just sh search Dawn Foster, see all of the wonderful things people are writing about her, all the wonderful memories people are, are sharing because it is a real real credit to her. Um, but as I say, the, the thing that which which comes up a lot in terms of her writing is housing and also Grenfell. Um, I want to go to a section from a 2017 piece um, from Jacobin. This was written on the day of the fire. Then Dawn wrote, Margaret Thatcher famously argued that there was no such thing as society. It was an idea that did immense damage, particularly to those who need social housing. But in places like West London on days like today, it is proven wrong in a fundamental way. The local community pulled together, offering places to stay, taking donations, donations, coordinating resources. The volume of rage at the tragedy and the fact that it seems so preventable has forced politicians to promise investigations. The battle now is to ensure that this anger is turned into change. Survivors must be properly housed. Those who could have prevented the fire must be held accountable. People living in similarly dangerous conditions across the country must be given urgent assistance. The housing crisis must be tackled. As one resident told me, many people will have died locked in their homes, aware that nobody had cared for their safety while they lived. The only way to change a world where that can happen is through political action. I think that sentence is, is a very important one to end on. The only way to change a world where that can happen is through political action.
someone at such a young age dying is is so tragic whoever they are um i know lots of you know we share lots of friends who will be you know in in, in deep mourning now i wanted you to talk i suppose on on a broad term of, of what what dawn foster and her work meant for for navara and the broader uk left she was um, a fearless journalist, woman, socialist. Uh, she was formidable. And I saw somebody uh, post this on Instagram, and I thought it was it summed her right up. She was the opposite of a sycophant. Dawn was pathologically, constitutionally incapable of being obsequious, of being servile. She could only tell the truth. And it didn't always advance her career. It wasn't always necessarily in her best interest, but th that's who she was. Um, it curtailed her, her, her pro progression in the industry massively. In terms of her relationship to Navarra, and she still did so extraordinarily well, and like I say, from her background, she was always defying the odds. To do that while retaining that honesty, I think, is remarkable. It's singular, I think, in Britain. In terms of her relationship to Navarra Media, she was always incredibly generous, very close friends with James Butler, of course, my, my co-founder. Uh, she would always make time to, to come on the show in the early days and, and to offer advice or tips um, uh, and she was just always there and she was very, very aware of the fact that we, we needed to change politics in this country and that it wasn't just going to come from some particular person, even if it's Jeremy Corbyn, leading the Labour Party. Dawn knew that we had to create a movement in this country, um, in the media, in organised labour, um, and yeah, of course, in party politics and social movements. She was somebody who was ready to be a part of that and to make serious sacrifices for that, to build a better country, a better, a better planet. Um, and so somebody like that, with that energy, that passion, that, that uh, constant determination to always just be brutally honest, she never punched down, it's important to say. I, I can't recall her ever punching down. Um, it is remarkable. And so for her to pass at, I think, 34, deeply, deeply, Deeply sad, deeply sad. I say that as somebody who, who who knew her, but I think, I think it's just it's you know, she had so she had so much to say. She had I know that she was working on a on a on a, on a larger project around housing around Grenfell. I don't know how that progressed. I think the last time I spoke to her was maybe about eighteen months ago. You know, face to face, unsurprisingly, maybe two years ago at a, a Grenfell solidarity demo. She was working on something then. This was probably two years ago. She wants to give a voice to people that didn't have a voice in this country. And so uh, obviously it's just terrible that somebody so spectacularly unique has, has gone. Um, but I think that's, that, that's the important thing to say is that she was, she was the opposite of so much that we criticize the media for in this country, Michael. You know, we talk about sycophancy and, 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 and civility and, and, and doing whatever you have to do to, to progress in the industry. She never did any of that. And she still scaled the heights. So rest in peace. I also think, and I've been, I suppose, reflecting on this a lot over the past 24 hours. She was also quite rare as a, a commentator on the left, because I think we often, I do this myself, you, you, you fall into this situation of thinking about short term tactics. You're, I think about this, especially in terms of the second referendum. I mean, I always thought the second referendum was a bad idea. Then by 2019, I was like, oh, let's go for it, trying to win over this section of the electorate, this section of the commentariat, et cetera, et cetera. Dawn never did any of that. She didn't give a fuck when it came to, to issues like that. Her purpose was clear, which was to represent voiceless people to talk about the issues she cared about, housing, poverty, austerity. She didn't flap about with sort of the moralism that I try not to fall into, but I, you know, looking back at sort of how I've engaged in politics over the past five years, I can't help it. I do it all the time. And I can't think of a single instance where Dawn got distracted or caught up in, 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 in that debate where there's all these people say, oh, the left there, you know, they're this, that, this, that, and we have to defend ourselves. No, we're not this, that, this, that. She's just like, who gives a fuck about this? And I, I really, really respect that. I knew Dawn for maybe 10 years. She was there covering the UCAN Cup process in 2010. You know, I, I, we would clash different personalities um, and that would happen with other people. It's important to say this, but I can honestly say whenever I had a disagreement with her and then somebody would sort of, you know, people have conversations or I would try and I, there was some, once I tried to uh, sort of mend a rift between her and somebody else, never once politically did I think she was wrong. Never once, never. I might have disagreed with the tone of what she said or whatever, but she was a comrade. And that's a really, really important thing to say, Michael, really important thing to say, because 
you know, like I said, when you when you had a, a disagreement generally over how the, the, the point was made rather than the actual substance of the point itself, you put it to one side and you say, no, no, politically she is sound. She is really up there with, with, with almost always getting things right. And like you say, there wasn't this flapping around, trying to be, you know, morally right. Uh, she had a real a hard heart, not in a bad way, in a very, very good way. She was an incredibly resolute, formidable woman. Um, there's not many people you can say that for, Michael. I really, honestly, there's very few people I can say politically. I don't, I don't recall ever actually disagreeing with something they said, the political mm. substance of it. I mean, we should clarify, obviously, she, she cared about being morally right, but it was not caring about being seen to be morally right. That, that's what makes people on, or people across the political spectrum, but especially, you know, I fall into it being seen to be morally right, you know, matters as much as, you know, actually holding the position you, you believe in. I want to go to a couple of, of comments. Juliet Jakes says, um, rest in power, Dawn, one of the smartest, most uncompromising and hilarious people I met, utterly dedicated to her class over her career. Thanks for covering this terrible mm. loss. And Sal says, Dawn was a journalist who put principles before career. The country would be a much better place if more in her industry did the same. Really lovely comments. As I say, I really do you know, recommend go on Twitter, search Dawn Foster, see all the wonderful things um, people are saying about her at the moment because you, you will see how much she meant to so many people. We, we, we posted an Instagram um, uh, sort of um, a carousel of images um, commemorating Dawn's passing. And I think the final one talked about how she should really be an inspiration to people that want to join the media to be journalists. And I thought what, what Juliet Jake said there was on the money. She put her class over her career. Um, uh, and that is, again, incredibly rare, Michael. You know, we, we do at Navarra Media what we do because we believe in, in, a, in a set of political values and we want to advance them. That's why we started the organisation. But Dawn, I mean, somehow somehow did that in the confines of the mainstream media, which is incredibly difficult, but she, she managed to do it. And she made some, some hugely important interventions. If I recommend you to do one thing this weekend, it's, it's go and look up um, what Dawn Foster has, has written over the past 10 years. Um, explore her work, um, watch the intervention she's made on, on, on YouTube. And um, yeah, my, my thoughts go out to, to everyone um, who was who was really close to her? I know there are a lot of people hurting this weekend.